So you want to build Kaya. Maybe you need a DPS. Maybe you're AR50 and bored. Maybe you want to play him because you think he's attractive. Whatever your reason, you've made a great choice. I have been building my Kaya recently and I've been super impressed with his physical damage. He's a four star free character, so naturally he's underrated. But our blue haired spy is actually very interesting. Today I'm going to show you how to get the most out of your Kaya, depending on how you want to use him. Uh, we're going to talk weapons, artifacts, team compositions, talents, and constellations, and how to maximize stats so that you can get exactly what you want out of Kaya. At first glance, Kaya's attacks are fairly simple, but if you look a little closer, and you may have noticed this already, his fourth attack, much like Kaching, actually allows him to teleport around an enemy. Here's how it looks in action, and if the enemy is already downed, by the time he gets to the fourth attack, he'll teleport to the next enemy within that region. So it actually makes him very hard to hit. If you look at these skill attributes, there's nothing fancy about them. They all scale off of attack. Every time he hits his elemental skill, he regenerates HP equal to 15% of his attack. This glacial heart also allows him to drop elemental particles, which means faster energy recharge, and he decreases sprinting stamina for your party by 20%. All very, very helpful, especially early game, but I believe he's also capable in late game. So let's say you want to build Kaya for DPS. This means you're gonna have him out on the field for long periods of time while he deals damage. For this, I recommend focusing on physical damage. Kaya's basic attacks are not infused with cryo, so that means you can really maximize his attack by increasing his physical damage. If you're looking to use him for a support, meaning you only want to have him out to apply cryo with his ult or his E and switch to another character, I would say focus on cryo damage. This will boost his elemental attacks. For weapons, my chief recommendation is the Aquila Favonia. Main reason, it has a extremely high base attack and you get this juicy physical damage bonus. But this special is also super overpowered. It's called Falcon's Defiance. It increases Kaya's attack by 20%. It means that when Kaya takes damage, his attack will increase by 20%. It will also regenerate 100% of Kaya's attack as HP and will deal 200% of attack as damage to surrounding opponents. And this can occur every 15 seconds. And this is only refinement rank one. This weapon combined with his healing talent basically makes him invincible. And of course, higher attack equals faster HP regeneration. I got lucky and pulled the Akula Favonia on the standard banner early on. The Summit Shaper is worth looking at if you use a Geo character with him and we'll have him pretty consistently covered in a shield. The Jade Cutter is also a great option. If you're free to play, I recommend the Prototype Rancor or the Royal Longsword. Look for physical damage or attack percent. If you're looking to build Kaya for support, meaning you're basically only using his cryo attacks, physical damage is going to be pointless for him because it will be canceled out by the cryo. The best option, in my opinion, for support Kaya is the Skyward Blade. It obviously has a high base attack because it is a 5-star, and its substat is Energy Recharge, which means you're going to be able to reapply his ult very frequently. The Jade Cutter is also a great option here, or the Favonius Greatsword. Now let's talk talents and talent priorities. When looking at prioritization, this first talent is going to be the most important because that's what you're going to be using him for the most and this is where you're going to see that physical damage come to life. When you level these up, you're going to see an attack increase on all of his attacks, including his charged, and you're going to see increased plunge damage as well. If you're going for support, you want to emphasize his cryo attacks, which is going to be his glacial waltz and his frost gnaw, his elemental skill, and his ultimate. Now let's talk artifacts. I have my Kaya in a two-piece bloodstained chivalry and a two-piece gladiator's finale, I'm getting that 25% increase on physical damage from the Bloodstained and an 80% attack increase with the Gladiator's Finale. Uh, this is what I'm currently running. I've gotten lucky on the Gladiator's Finale artifacts, which is why I've kept them. Uh, another alternative to look at to balance him out and give him more cryo damage is the Blizzard Strayer set. I haven't gotten lucky on the Blizzard Strayer artifacts, which is why I'm not using it. If you are able to get a two-piece, that's going to boost his crowd damage by 15%. The best stat, in my opinion, for the Goblet is Physical Damage Bonus. If you didn't know already, the Goblet is the only place that you can get a special attack bonus, such as Electro, Geo, Physical, or you can get Healing Bonus and stuff like that. 
This is the only artifact that you can get physical damage on, so I recommend utilizing that. Using a crowd damage bonus here is tempting, but physical damage is going to boost his normal and charge attack, uh, which is priority if you want to use him for DPS. For the timepiece, you're going to want to look for attack percent, especially if you're using Aquila Favonia. This attack percent is going to scale off of Kai's base attack, which includes Kai's base attack and his weapon's base attack. Feather is obviously attack, and Flower is HP. For the hat, I recommend looking at crit damage, not crit rate, and I'll tell you why in a second. The main subset you're going to want to look for is attack percent, crit rate, and crit damage. Uh, flat attack is also good, but it's not ideal because you won't get as high of an increase as you will with attack percent. If you're looking for a more frequent burst release, energy recharge is also worth having, but not necessarily something to target. Same with elemental mastery. Maikai's elemental mastery is low, and that's because I'm not using him for elemental reactions. If you're looking to use him for elemental reactions with characters like Shangling or Sinkjo, elemental mastery is also valuable, but not necessarily something to target. Before we look at constellations, let's look at my stats overall for Kaya. We're looking at 2000 plus attack, 17k max HP. Now you might be asking, why is your crit rate so low? In order to explain, let's talk about Kaya's constellations and team comp. Unfortunately, I have not acquired any of Kaya's constellations, but Kaya's first constellation is excellent. The crit rate of Kaya's normal and charge attacks against opponents affected by Cryo is increased by 15%. So if you're able to consistently apply his E, or if you're running him with another Cryo character that keeps Cryo on the field like Ganyu, this is going to be super helpful. This C2 is also worth looking for, especially if you're using him for a support role. This means that every time his Glacial Waltz, which is his ultimate, defeats an opponent, it's going to increase duration by 2.5 seconds up to a maximum of 15 seconds. So this is going to be great against mobs or will allow you to get elemental reactions more frequently. Let's skip to C4. If Kai's HP falls below 20%, it will create a cryo shield that absorbs damage equal to 30% of Kai's max HP. And this will last for 20 seconds. With my current build and the healing properties that Kai has already, he is very much a tank and this is just going to make him even stronger. In his final constellation, his Glacial Waltz will generate an extra Icicle and will regenerate 15 energy when cast. That will increase his energy recharge even faster. Pulling a Kaya constellation is more rare than pulling a 5 star, so good luck with that. But even without constellations, he is still worth it. Last, but certainly not least, let's talk about team composition. I won't go over every possible team comp because you're smart, you can figure that out yourself. But I will show you what I'm running. So Kaya is my second DPS, uh, with my main DPS being Hu Tao, Ganyu for charge DPS, and Singcho for healing, defense, and support. Hu Tao is a very high risk, high reward character. She benefits from having low HP, so it's great to have Kaya to sub in for physical damage when Hu Tao is either on cooldown low health or she's dead. Ganyu is great because she has the cryo flower that helps keep cryo constantly applied to enemies which is going to increase Kaya's attack. She also is very strong for range shots. One of the main reasons that I have two cryo members on my team is for this elemental resonance. You're going to activate this effect called shattering ice means you'll be affected by Electro but 40% less time. It also increases crit rate against opponents that are frozen or affected by Cryo by 15%. As you noticed, my Kaya is definitely low on crit rate, so this helps make up for that and boosts him to right about 50%. Sinkcho is there so I can freeze enemies and to help keep my characters protected and healed up. I've had a blast building Kaya. Uh, I think he's a super great addition to a lot of teams. Before you go, smash like. Have fun building Kaya, and I'll see you next time.